Connected with Chicago. News Talk 890. WLS. Seven oh nine with Don Wade and Roma. Somebody throw water in my face and I'll pretend to be a hurricane reporter. Wait a second. <laughs> give me that give me my give me my part and I'll throw Let water me. in my face and I'll stand here and Great uh, idea. I'll do the uh, Okay. We're going to do uh, Isabel uh, updates. We've got uh, we got our guy we're going to talk to standing on the beach with his standard ABC issue parka, water in the face, uh, waterlogged microphone with a with a report with all kinds of you know surf in the background and all that stuff. I think we're are we going to do Moorhead City or Virginia Beach or one of the Virginia Beach. Okay, uh, and then we'll do the crazy dream. Plus, uh, there's uh, there's a show that's in the making. We're going to get to that. That's a brand new special that they're doing just about hurricanes. Now, on the on the serious side of this, so far we're having people evacuated. But the way it's impacting most of the people in Chicago is if you go out to O'Hare or Midway and you're trying to fly someplace, there is the ripple effect because they're canceling all of these flights out of that you know the 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 target area of the hurricane. So all the flights are canceled from there, which creates the ripple effect here in Chicago. I think the reason hub. people get cynical or humorous about it, though, is because how many days have they been talking about this and building it up, no. building it? And they've watched it go from a Category 5 down to a 2, which is still extremely yeah. dangerous. We know that. It is. And we're going to get our, um, we're going to do some hurricane things in just a couple of minutes. But there's something that's uh, jumping off the front pages that we have to deal with. Before the hurricane, okay? Sure. Right. And that is that the chairman quits the stock exchange in a furor over pay. Headline in the Wall Street Journal, Grasso quits New York Stock Exchange amid pay furor. Ah. Okay, well, that's one way to spin the story, but um, there are people who are now, you know, doing the chicken little thing and and claiming the sky is falling and if he's gone over all of this money that he was getting what a hundred and almost four hundred and forty million dollar retirement pay package that uh, oh my gosh how could he possibly be making that uh, that kind of money and there must be corruption involved well and, and be and, a regulator uh, and and all that money must mean corruption involved and and so therefore we can't trust the new york stock exchange so we better sell all our stocks is that what the story really is? Is it? Mr. Grasso, uh, they, they paint quite a picture of this guy. He rises at the exchange. He was a clerk there in 1968. He made $81 eight. a week. And here he became one of the most powerful man, men on Wall Street. And everybody says he was spectacular at his job. They give him kudos right. for his work. Applauded his his management, his strong leadership, in particular reopening the markets after the September 11 terrorist attack. They, in fact, they're saying this is the first time somebody who is being applauded for the great work he's doing is fired. Well, they pretty <laughs> you much are doing such good work. You're out of here. They shoved him out of the airplane and stomped on his fingers when he tried to hold on. But actually, they uh, what they did was force him to resign. So he has given up his position as the the big shot at the New York Stock Exchange after doing a good job. But there's this um, there are certain people who don't quite get it, and I don't know whether anybody is uh, headed for the door and 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 saying, "I'm yeah, I'm going to sell all my stocks because of Richard Grasso." But the people you regulate, how can you be a regulator? Uh, now you see, Roma has already touched on that. When we were going to get to that as the answer to the problem, which was the real story, the real story, which you have already uh, explained, is. That when the people you regulate are part of those who vote for your compensation, if they are among those, then how compromised is that? That's so slimy and immoral that it stunk to high heaven. Well, it isn't slimy and it isn't necessarily immoral unless something wrong was done, but it does offer a scenario where people can be suspicious, and rightly so. Because of the 14, I think it's 14 members of the board of directors of the uh, uh, 
New York Stock Exchange, uh, 13 of the... No, there are 20. I'm sorry, there are 20. Uh, 13 of these people voted to um, accept his resignation. Seven were opposed to his resignation. But the, there are a whole bunch of these people who are members of the board who are also executives with corporations who are regulated. In other words, they're corporations that trade on the New York Stock Exchange. So you, if, you all, if you are like, a, like a, one of the major figures in a, in a big corporation, your, your company's stock is traded on the New York Stock Exchange, but you're also a, on the board of directors of the New York Stock Exchange, and you get to vote the compensation, all the remuneration for the director of the New York Stock Exchange, and understand that the New York Stock Exchange is not just a, a private business, but it also is a quasi-regulator, a regulator to make sure that there isn't any, you know, underhanded trading and, you know, you know, you know, shifty stuff going on. Well, you know, it makes you you wonder, you know, where's your allegiance? So they said, "Oh, we can't have this this taint." So they tossed him overboard. Now, the question is, are you going to sell your stock? Anybody 591-8900 is a time Katie barred the door. We're out. We're going to sell it all. Are you? Anybody? They're trying to create this. Well, uh, everybody panic. running for president had something to say about it because it, this was a topic that they could come down on about corruption. And so, of course, um, Joe Lieberman said, for the sake of confidence in the market, it's time for Mr. Graslow to resign. No. Um, and I think it was, let's see, Edwards issued a similar sa statement. Instead of setting an example of ethical leadership for the market he oversees, Mr. Grasso's behavior has shaken the faith of investors and the foundation of the stock exchange. Yeah. What will you do about your stock today? What will you do about your investments? How shook up are you over this? 591-8900. How, how quaking in your boots are you? Over Richard Grasso. Begins as clerk, builds wide array of contacts and big pay. I don't, I don't resent his pay. If, the, if they want to, you know, pay him that much, as long as he's earning the money for doing legitimate work, and it's not, you know, a payoff to keep him off their backs. He uh, is the one who began to jazz up the arcane operations of this elderly institution, this 211-year-old institution, by bringing a little glamour to it. He was the one who invited Muhammad Ali, Walter Cronkite, Hank Aaron, you know, all these celebrities to the opening bell activity. That yeah. was his brainstorm. Do you know, here's one of the things that's really weird is that when the board was uh, told that there was this big controversy over his pay, some of the board members were they acted shocked at the amount of money that that he was getting it was like Gee, gosh, we vote for who that? gave who <laughs> gave him all that do you know that he was born, raised in queens by a single mother and two maiden aunts and he came up from nothing he's the bootstraps guy all right paul is in naperville paul welcome God, to Roma. wls good morning paul how, how are you guys this morning excellent uh this is just yet another example of the manipulation that is probably occurring um, within this organization. And of the, uh, let me think here, how many technology companies I worked for in the 90s, uh, three of the major players, I lost, I can't even tell you how much money, uh, tend to well into the six figures uh, because of things that I've seen personally occur. And if the average investor really had any insight into what, really goes on out there on a daily basis everybody take their money out of the market okay now are you out of the market completely um you know i've got a couple of core stocks that i kept only because i just um, don's grinning at you he's got a big big grin on his face <laughs> i bet he does yeah. he does gotta he keep a couple I mean, of oars in the water there <laughs> absolutely and the and the thing of it is is uh, you know the uh the enron itis has definitely cleaned up wall street uh by a large margin but you know as the fear of that starts to wear off, and it will at some point, yep. you're going to get back to the... The greed know, is good. 
the, the $200 million shipments to a rented warehouse to, uh, to make the quarterly numbers look good. And that stuff goes on all the time to this day. So. Yeah, but do we believe that this guy was corrupt, Richard you know, Grasso? It's hard to say, Don, yeah. but it's really hard to look and justify the fact that this guy's pulling in, you know, some nine-figure compensation package for essentially being a regulatory oversight for the stock exchange. It's just, it's hard to justify that. Any, you know, the average citizen out there on the street looks at that as just outrageous, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, again, we've all lost uh, half of our retirement funds, and luckily I'm still 35 years old, so I've got some time left to rebuild all of it. Right. But, See, yeah. I'm looking at $140 million. Yeah. That, that's an awful lot of money. Oh, it is. And, and I, CEOs routinely get shocking. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I don't know. And, and he's supposed to be regulating those very companies who vote to right. give him that money. That, what, so was that's, his, uh, you know, what was his annual compensation package, though, aside from the retirement uh, lump sum that he got? I mean, what was his yearly salary? Um, I'm looking for that. I haven't found that. I'll tell you I'll what. Deeper we'll in this we'll have it in a minute. Uh, All right. Appreciate your call. Thanks, guys. Great show. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, not only have we got the CEO quitting, but we're gonna we're definitely gonna check the uh, the hurricane. We're going direct to the scene, Virginia Beach, uh, Moorhead City, and all along there. I'm gonna give you my crazy dream involving Geraldo Rivera, uh, and and the hurricane coverage. Plus, uh, there's a new TV show that they're, they're working on already, and barcodes. They're going to remove the barcodes from all of the goods in the stores and replace them with electronic tracking devices. Now, there's a question. That's fine for checking inventory with, their, with your warehouse and on the retail shelf, but it continues to track even into your home. And the question is, is that an invasion of privacy? 721 WLS. Currently and through November 14th, WLS is executing a contest that announces potential cash winners on air through personal greetings. Names are generated through telemarketing and database campaigns. No purchase necessary. If you would like to sign up, click on WLSAM.com.